How you doing YouTube? Matt with Massive Bear Reviews, back with yet another review. Not just any other review. A little bit of mystery beers. Hopefully good mystery beers. We won't know until we unwrap it. Why? Because that's what a mystery beer is, baby. Um, yeah, the shtick. People wrap up beers. They wrap them up quite nice in this beautiful shroud of paper towel, mind you. Sometimes paper. It doesn't have to be paper towel. Um, and then they send them to me and I drink them. I talk about them. Then I unwrap it and we'll see if I'm close. How about that? This one comes courtesy of Josh from Indiana, I believe. I got a bunch of ones wrapped in paper towels all at the same time, but I'm pretty sure this is from him. So if it's from somebody else, it's from somebody else, but we can give it a whirl, see what she's got. Okay. The darkness. A little bit darkness darkness going on here. Um, doesn't look super super rich dark though, like a stout or anything like that. Looks more like brown ale, maybe a barley wine, maybe an English old ale, something around those kind of lines. Um, you know, pinky finger. Just underneath of like just north of khaki, south of Maupaul colored kind of head. And she's got a rich darkness to her, but like I said, you can definitely get through her. She's got a ruby red kind of core to her. If you hold her up to some light, you can definitely get that kind of rich mahogany tones off her. But yeah, she looks dark, dark, she looks malty. Let's see what the nose has. Yeah, it, it, I'm getting a big, nice, sweet maltiness to it. Not overly sweet, though. Um, uh, rich kind of chocolate mixed with a little bit of caramel. So there's chocolate malt like in there. There's a little bit of kind of caramel vibes floating around in there. A little bit of soft yeastiness. Maybe a little bit of fruitiness to that yeastiness. Um, but really not much as far as bitterness goes. What does it smell like? It could be some American version of a Belgian beer. It could be um, something a bit more richer, a bit more darker. It's coming off a little bit kind of like spicy, wee heavy, like a big kind of English ale to me. That spiciness, I think I'm getting a little bit from hops, but there might be a little bit of rye in there too, but I'm getting like that little bit of spiciness to it. So I'm kind of like leaning towards like a, a wee heavy at this moment. Yeah, it smells like soft caramels. Like I said, you get that little bit of spiciness, you get that little bit of chocolate, you get that little bit of caramel. Let's dive in. Cheers. Boozy, man. Boozy. Big beer. Big, sweet maltiness. A little bit of that spiciness. I think that spiciness is coming from a subtle bit of hops there. Maybe a little bit of smoked malt, too. I'm definitely leaning in the wee heavy range. Here's the thing, though. I'm kind of torn. I think... I don't know if this is barrel aged or not. I think it might have a little bit of spirit going on because of how that booziness comes off. Mm. That's a big beer. I mean, this uh, has to be at least 10%. Nice, rich, delicious, kind of aged kind of caramel on that. Uh, a little bit of spiciness to that malt. Like I said, might be rye, might be a little bit of hops. A little bit of chocolate comes through. Like I said, it's a mixture of kind of that caramel and chocolate and getting big kind of rich fruitiness. Man, I really want to say this is barrel aged, but I don't know if it is. I don't, I'm, I'm getting that big red fruitiness. I'm getting a big booziness, but I'm not getting. Just missing a component in there to kind of really make me think this is a barrel aged. But I want to say it. I want to say it's a barrel aged, somebody's version of a barrel aged we have you. We're going to say it. It's a barrel aged version of somebody's, could be a Belgian. It could be something maltier, it could be something big. I don't know why I'm leaning wee heavy. It's just kind of what my brain's telling me right now. If you told me this is somebody's version of a double age in a bourbon barrel, fine. It, 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 either way, it's a big, huge, boozy beer. I'm not getting a bunch of kind of barrel character off it, but I'm getting that little bit of soft kind of vanilla, kind of, kind of, uh, a vanilla oakiness from it not nothing overly dry but that big vanilla from a wood component kind of vibe as opposed to just being vanilla added combined with that booziness makes me want it to call this barrel aged beer so either it's a big huge spicy um uh barrel aged scotch wee heavy kind of beer or, or non barrel aged wee heavy or um somebody's really boozy kind of take on some kind of belgian or something that has a little bit of pink on a barrel thrown at i just can't get it I just can't tell you if it's one or the other. I should pick one, though. I'm going to go with my gut. I'm going to go with my gut instinct and say, barely too heavy. It's probably a, I don't know, five-year-old Coors Light for all I know. So, yeah, that's all I have. I mean, it's big. It's malty. It's boozy. It's got this nice kind of spiciness to it. I dig it. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. This is from the same brewery um, that I did a blind one from uh, one, 
Oak, say maybe a couple days ago. Taxman Brewing. Uh, it, it reminded me a lot of that beer, but I, didn't, I was almost like second guessing myself. This is one of the funner things when you get beers that are very close to each other. It, it, it reminded me similar, so similarly of that brewery that I kind of was like, oh man, you're just thinking that because you just did that other beer. But it's there qualified. It's a Belgian style quadruple ale. Uh, it's 9.5 percent alcohol by volume. It doesn't back here for those qualified. Our Abbey style quadruple. This dark ale features Belgian specialty malts and rich deep notes of caramel, raisin, and plum, enhanced with the Belgian yeast and esters. A sweet complex ale. It's a perfect dessert beer to sip and savor. Uh, like I said, I had this the other day, uh, or, or their, I think it was their Belgian dark or their doubled version of that. Actually, I think I might have the can kind of floating around here. I guess I don't. Um, uh, usually kind of leave stuff sitting around for pictures after a couple days and stuff like that and uh, see if I want to keep them throw them on the shelf. Anyway, um, I, I think that was their Belgian double. Um, this tasted very similar to it. It was kind of like a Belgian beer, but without that big kind of Belgian soul that I talked about in the other one. Um, but it just a bit more boozy and a bit more big. Um, like I said, it came off a little bit kind of more like wee heavy um, to me, but it, what it did come off is a big, rich um, malty beer. Now, I did get those kind of rich red fruits out of it. That's nice. But it wasn't so much a Belgian quad. It is just a big, rich, kind of fruity kind of malty beer as opposed to a more kind of, dare I say, qualified? Uh, no, because I wouldn't say that because it's got a poopy to say. Uh, Belgian style beer. It, it, it's nice. It's fine. It's tasty. It's it's a well-made beer. But it definitely takes like, tastes like an American take on a Belgian. Let's put it that way. So let's talk about it. It's one of the better quads that it has, really, especially American-born. Eh, no. I mean, it just comes off as a bit too American for me to really kind of get all hot and bothered about. But at the same time, it's tasty. Um, I think I might have said this um, about this brewery. It might have been about another brewery, but it still rings true. Is that, you know, it, it, is this going to blow me away? Am I going to buy a bunch of these? No. I'd buy, like, a four-pack or a six-pack of this. Definitely see how they age. I think that would be a cool thing to do. But if this brewery is down the street for me, I'd be ecstatic. For people to kind of go out of their way to kind of experiment with a lot of beer beer styles outside of the Haysboro Hop Thotty kind of pastry stout world and to get into kind of, like, Belgian stuff like that kind of pricks pricks and and prickles and ticks and whatever you want to call it strums my heartstrings uh so that and then sell the school value availability no idea maybe can josh can uh, uh kind of chime in on that one leave you with if you like what we like this if you like american born belgian beers um to me uh the real deal ones tend to come off a bit more um rounded a bit more cohesive um the belgian candy sugar comes off a bit softer a bit more fluffy not as candied and there tends to be just a kind of dryness in a, a bit more of a kind of mature kind of um, yeast base to them as opposed to just being a little bit more kind of newer and a little bit more kind of Again, candy is where I'm going here, kind of sugar-coated. Um, so if you like those kind of beers, you'll dig this. Or if you like Belgians in general, always nice to give a beer whirl from a brewery trying to do such things because you don't see that a lot in the States. You should see more of it, personally. So there you go. Another review in the books. Mystery beer, mind you. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massive if you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting stuff. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice Belgian right now. And hope to see you next time. Cheers.